Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with some more War Thunder ground forces. Today I've got some footage for you featuring the T-50 in the realistic battle mode. This was a casual game I had with uh, Bombadil. He should be somewhere behind my tank. But uh, generally, I like to play realistic battles off and on. I use it as a way to warm up, and then I usually switch over into uh, simulator battles. Plus, let's face it, it is fun to look at your tank from a third-person perspective once in a while, see all the nice animations, and uh, just see the model and the texture work in play. But uh, anyways, we were, uh, of course, just trying to stick together for most of the game and uh, acquire targets. You are equipped with a 45 millimeter main gun, which uh, can typically uh, put some hurt on enemies as long as you're aiming for weak spots on tougher tanks if you're shooting at something uh, lower battle rank or much lighter then you usually don't have too much of a problem here you can see dealing with a tougher target quite a ways out and uh, trying to aim for the driver port on the Stug which seems to be the major weak spot on that uh, tank destroyer or assault gun we should say perhaps and as you can see, they're just putting rounds into them, doing some damage, continuing to fire. Some shots are missing, but probably just because we're outside of our effective range. And, uh, you know, just trying to maintain a decent hull down position and continue to shoot. There it is. That guy was super stubborn about maintaining his position. Didn't really work out for him in the end. But uh, you can see in the chat below, somebody complaining about kill stealing. And uh, I know there are times when people specifically wait in games uh, to finish off a tank in order to get the killing blow, but uh, in a game like this, let's face it, nobody's sitting next to you thinking, oh, I'm going to steal that kill. This isn't a hit points game. This is a game where you can get one-shotted. You can take a hit to the ammo rack and explode in one shot. You know what I'm thinking when I'm sitting next to somebody? I'm thinking, let's kill that guy before he kills us. So if you're ever playing a game of War Thunder Ground Forces with me, trust me. Actually, if you're ever playing any game with me, trust me. I'm not really going to care about kill stealing. I'm going to want us to win and take out the enemy before they let us have it. And uh, I think if you complain about kill stealing, Especially in realistic or simulator battles. Maybe it's time to go back to COD or something because uh, I don't think this is the place for you But uh, anyways as you saw there Bombadil had actually rammed my tank and uh, threw my Sighting off and it always frustrates me when people do that and then it's Bombadil I remember him apologizing over voice comms. I was like you idiot You've cost us the war no, but uh, it's still just one of those things that makes me rage especially when it happens in World of Tanks and you know you're about to get that killing shot and somebody bumps you and then somebody else jumps in there and they steal your kill and then you rage at them for kill stealing. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, anyways, moving right along, we are making some progress here and just trying to move up, clean out the side of this map. You'll always see me looking behind the tank, watching my flank, making sure that nobody's coming up behind us. Uh, you always want to maintain situational awareness. Now, a lot of people consider the Russian armor at rank 1 to be overpowered in comparison to what the Germans have, and uh, for the most part, I will say that that is just simply untrue. They are difficult to deal with, yes, but overpowered, no. I would just say historically accurate in many cases. I've brought this up before. I think that in some areas, German ammunition might not be as potent as it should be realistically. But beyond that, it just really comes down to finding the weak spots. I can tell you that I've extensively tested many tanks in custom battles against Bombadil. And we found a lot of the weak spots on these vehicles, including this T-50. The T-50, it does have that really nice sloped 40 millimeter armor all around it. But as you're seeing here in the back of the tank, there are plenty of weak spots. And you can also shoot at the flat portions past the tracks. Now here, back of the turret, you can see there's a hatch, primary weak spot. Shoot into that, and uh, you'll take out the majority of their crew. Uh, you can shoot into the back of the engine and set that sucker on fire as well. There's a flat portion of the tank on the rear there too. But uh, not hard to deal with from the back. If you are low caliber, 20 millimeters. 
Uh, it is possible to drive up behind this thing and put rounds into it point blank range and take it out. Don't sit there at 100 meters plus trying to shoot at the front thinking that you're going to take it out. You're not. Even the driver hatch, it's just not going to happen. You need to make sure that you zip past this thing and deal with it from behind. Also, on top of that, there are some tanks that maybe you should just not deal with and use your abilities as a scout to perhaps relay coordinates or maybe drop artillery on them. Figure other targets to deal with instead of wasting time on something that you just shouldn't be fighting in the first place. Now at this point of the match, as you can see, we've pushed up pretty close to the enemy spawn point, which is very dangerous, obviously, because this game does feature respawns, unfortunately. And uh, more often than not, you'll get somebody that just spawns right back has that little bit of invincibility time, and they're looking to get some revenge. But uh, here we caught this uh, Panzer IV on the flank, put some rounds into him, looking for those ammo racks, and he finally goes up in flames. But uh, at this point, we see another target up front, Bombadil helping me engage. And again, I'm just always paranoid of, about somebody respawning in the base and ending up behind us. So I think a little later on I tell him, hey, let's check our flanks. But uh, he manages to take another one out there. And we turn around. And again, this is kind of unfair that we're at their base. I hate when somebody's in my base as well. It really wasn't intentional. Uh, you can see just me looking for a weak spot shot there. Boom. I can only assume on that shot it uh, crossed through the driver's port at an angle, hitting the side ammo rack storage. Uh, it didn't really indicate ammunition detonation, but uh, with that kind of explosion on one shot, I'm assuming that that's probably what happened. And yes, you may notice that I tend to favor APCR, and I understand that it's not the same as APCR in World of Tanks. I know my ballistic data, I get how it works, and I use APCR because I am looking for that penetration power. I'm the kind of guy that learns weak spots. I'm the kind of guy that studies tanks to the point where I know where the ammunition racks are. My whole objective with using APCR is to strike the ammo rack. I want to be able to pen and find that ammo inside the tank so that that's what blows up. My goal is to kill enemy tanks as fast as possible, and APCR usually allows me to do that. Now, if you're aiming for random spots on the tank and you're using APCR, then yeah, you might turn it into Swiss cheese, but you're not always getting that killing blow, which is why it is important that you aim for those soft spots inside the tank. You really want to learn about what's inside as well as what's on the outside. But uh, with that said, a lot of people also tend to aim for the engines. They think that, let me set this guy on fire. Well, that's all fine and dandy. I will often do that as well, but the problem is you set them on fire. In this game, you can upgrade and get some fire extinguishers that allow you to have two charges. That means two chances to put out that fire. Uh, again, I've argued that it's something that should be looked at, tweaked, or possibly removed from the more realistic battle modes. But uh, in this game, again, I think the priority should be on ammo racks because if you set somebody on fire, they can put it out twice. Or, even if they don't have an extinguisher, sometimes it takes a while for that fire to do anything. And they're sitting there turning their turret looking at you and they're going to get at least one or two shots out and possibly uh, take you with them. So again, go for something that's going to cause them to explode immediately versus within a few seconds. Back to the game at hand. Pretty good push through their base, taking out quite a few tanks on the way out. But uh, you can see that they are winning due to the objectives. At this point, I said Bombadil, split up. Head to Charlie. I'm going to Bravo. Let's see if we can somehow turn this thing around. Uh, I'm thinking we're screwed, but I figured we would try. The T-50s have that great mobility and speed, so we can get there in time. I do see a target to the left, but I'm like, forget it. I'm not going to sit here and engage that when I need to focus on this objective. So I just drive right into the circle and begin the cap. Bombadil is trying to cap Charlie. So, no matter what, the enemy has to go to uh, a couple different locations if he wants to re-take. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking, where did I last see a tank? I checked my six a little bit there. I know that I had seen one uh, beyond the bridge. Thinking about doing a little bit of peekaboo work here as we pull around this corner. Just waiting for him to show up. Uh, hopefully he's not ready for me. Zone captured. Get a decent amount of points for that. So it's good to do it. 
And uh, there he is, just driving as fast as he possibly can. Looks like we hit some solid armor there, no penetration. Still using APCR, hoping to get those weak spots. There's a shot. I don't know if that was his or somebody behind me, but there's one that he throws at us really quick. And I go for what looks like a driver port shot, which uh, manages to cause a catastrophic explosion as we pull back. I do another flank check, not seeing anything really quick there. And I just think that I'm going to hold this position. But uh, I have a feeling they've got somebody else over there. You can see the name tag now. I take a shot to the back, luckily shrugging it off. And this guy, as you can see, rams right into me, pushing my tank around. Big mistake, although he does manage to damage my engine. Artillery inbound. I'm starting to put rounds into him, but it's turret versus turret. Not having a whole lot of luck here as another round goes through him. And he's hit by artillery from a friendly. I somehow am surviving this bombardment. Now, I had said big mistake because instead of sitting back and shooting into the rear of my tank, he rammed me, which pushed me around at an angle which made it very hard for him to shoot at me. He should have stopped around the bridge area and just kept shooting into the flank of this T-50. You can see another enemy shows up, but it is too little too late. So again, guys, this isn't World of Tanks. As far as we know, there's no major or catastrophic ramming damage. I've broken my tank against a tree before, but as far as ramming other tanks, I don't think I've seen anything happen. And realistically, you may immobilize a tank in reality, but uh, you're not going to really kill the tank or cause it great harm. You got to think about how tough these things really are and were. But uh, in that case, he should have stopped at uh, a few feet away and just put rounds into my weak spots, especially back at the turret. I think it's only about 15 millimeters of armor, easily penetrated, even by the short barrel 75. But those are the mistakes. We learn from them, even if they're not our own. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you are enjoying the War Thunder Ground Forces coverage on my channel. If you haven't tried this game out yet, always have a link in the description below. Give it a click, make an account, free to do so, and just try it out for yourself. You don't like it? Well, uninstall, easy enough. And so with that, thank you so very much for joining me. I will definitely see you on the next one.